later on when you have Tom Jones in. I'm really happy about that. I'm excited about this Tom song, Jones. This song makes me so happy. Does it? Oh, yeah. I'm a man! I know you are. Of course. God. What a man. I heard. I heard I heard things about him. He's packing? Yeah. What did you hear? I heard that he's packing. Well, of course. That's kind of been the, the thing that's oh, really? been going on for years. Yeah, because when he performs live, he wears uh, tight trousers. Down there, all the way to yeah. his... wears tight trousers, and uh, you could see things, and then you go... Because I had just seen Tom Jones probably uh, a couple of years ago uh, at most uh, in Atlantic City. And uh, you do look and go, that can't possibly be that. Because it's just down. I, I was thinking perhaps a, a roll of Krugerrands were in his pocket <laughs> or something. Just He travels with a big roll of Krugerrands. But uh, no, it's, uh, it's, all, it's all Tom. Apparently. Wow. That's why the girls get all sexed up. Six bomb, six bomb. They get all sexed up and throw their panties at him and bras and, uh, uh, yeah, he, he apparently, uh, all ages too. It's there were te- teen girls there and then there were old bags. Really? They're all this throwing, is- yeah, everything from thongs to big bloomer panties. And then he wipes his head with them. He sweats like a pig. <laughs> Wipes his head with him and throws him back into the crowd. You can always tell what kind of woman is throwing her thing at him if he wipes his head and he looks like an Indian woman at the end. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, boy, she's probably cranky this week. <laughs> yeah, a girl had Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Tom Jones. It's the Opie and Anthony show. And uh, sitting here, none other, Tom Jones. <laughs> right. How you doing, man? Yeah, good, thanks. Got a new album out? Yes. Ah, oh, damn. You're still cranking. Yeah. I Go mean, do it. I mean, not even like one of these guys, because there are people out there that are, you know, hanging on by the skin of their teeth to a career and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, I saw you recently um, in Atlantic City right. and uh, just kicking ass. And the fans, what got me was uh, their, their kids going to see you. Yep. And then, you know, some of the old broads. <laughs> they're still they're still digging on you there, Tom. Yep. But uh it's it's amazing the audience that goes to see you. Mm. And uh the show you put on, phenomenal. Thank you. I mean you would think uh not not that I you know, I'm not saying, hey, you know, why don't you uh, settle down or something like that, but <laughs> you know, you would think that you might lighten up after the years. Yeah. You're still all over that stage. You got uh, the set of pipes on you is still amazing. Mm-hmm, thank you. And uh, if I could keep just uh, kissing that ass, uh, well, why not? I'll keep doing it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a copy, an advanced copy of the CD. Um, some people would probably call it an illegal bootleg copy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was raving about it. I mean, it really was fucking great. I yeah, mean, it, yeah. was, it was all, it was energy. It was, it was that, that, that's the song, uh, I'm Alive. Mm. And I was running around just yelling, I'm a man! Not quite as well as you did it, but it was just fucking <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah, I myself you. never heard of you. No, uh, <laughs> of course. My father, and when we, you. <laughs> my father, when I was like eleven years old, and this had to be forty years ago, mm-hmm. came home with an album signed by Tom Jones and said he played cards with you. But I, you would, his last name is Voss, but I think he was lying. Oh Hold my on, God. Did, what's did, his last name? Joe Voss. That's yeah, Joe Voss. I know Joe Voss. Get out! That's my father. You really? Don't know. Yes. Yeah, I remember Joe Voss. He yeah. played cards with you, and he came home with an album. Yeah, yeah. We used to hang out. Get out of here. You know, His, he was telling the truth? Yeah, in the corporate and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that <laughs> that is actually, I'm shocked. It's, yeah. Joe Boss, yes, my Wait, dad. Yeah. Are you kidding? Are you really remember Joe Boss? <laughs> no, no, I know Joe Boss. That's oh, my God. He, he's the guy that would come in and complain how stupid his kid was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it must have made quite an impression. I haven't yeah. seen him for a long time, but yeah, yeah we used to hang out. Yeah. And does, I saw, I, does he owe you money? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, he <laughs> he never used to carry any money. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll chip then, off the old block. <laughs> huh? I tell you, it, was a, it was a funny thing. He came, because um, I knew him from New York, you know, and then he came over to, to England. I was playing the Palladium in, in London, and he showed up. Yeah. And um, he said, I'd like to invite you to a party tonight. I said, oh, really? You know what I mean? Because he was... <laughs> <laughs> we were always inviting him. So, uh, yeah, it was in, in the Ritz. He had a suite in the Ritz. We went over and had a big slap-up meal, champagne. I couldn't believe it. And he paid for it. This is... I'm stunned. Either, hold on. Either there's another Joe Vaughn no, who's big problem. in the record industry, no, where you no, have no. one of those photographic... Mem- you have, like, a photographic memory? Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, how would you that remember... That was 40 years ago. Joe Voss from yeah. 40 years ago. Damn. Mm-hmm. Well, that's something, Rich. You got a claim to fame, finally. 
I really heard it. TV. Okay. Father uh, hung out with Tom Jones. Uh, and I like the fact that Tom still has no interest in talking to Rich. That no, makes no. me really happy. Like, who cares? All right, what's well, he, what's he doing now, Joel? Uh, yeah, he works at a uh, travel agency. Nothing, you know, he's married again, right. third time. And uh, oh, he boy. lives in New York here. Oh, good. You know, a real su- yeah. success story there. Well, Just it, like what? Tom. Is it hard to pretend? <laughs> I asked Tom, is it hard to pretend like when the older chicks come up to you? That you know that they still have that, that you're interested. Is it, is it, <laughs> I mean, because you're legendary. Tom Jones is legendary for just for, for women. That's like your thing. Is that mm. chicks throw their underwear at you? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. which is a great thing to be known for. Mm. Um, and I guess you got to be nice to the older ones, but it's got to be kind of irritating. No, they, they, you know, they're good. They're good people. It's uh, the Cougars. People, people, you know. Yeah, but I mean, when it comes to like you know banging them. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, but, What's the cutoff age? Do you have a cutoff age where it's like they got to show you ID and if it's over this, you got to give them a boot? Uh, yeah, about 30, I would think. Yeah, yeah, that's probably it, right? 30 still? Yeah. Younger than 30? That's right. Wow. 30. He's Tom Jones, for God's sake. What are you thinking? I saw, like I said, when I, when I went and saw you in Atlantic City, uh, there were uh, these older women that came up and they're throwing those big old bloomers right. at you and stuff. And uh, then these uh, these real young girls came up with thongs. That's right. And they start throwing those, and they're singing and dancing to to your songs, uh, the newer songs, and you know your classic hits that mm-hmm. everybody knows. And I'm just watching this, going, this guy has just got it down. Well, there you go. You, you figured out the formula. A lot of a lot of practice. Yeah, yeah. You hypnotize <laughs> these girls. Is uh, uh, I mean, what what is, uh, has changed since? You know, touring in the older days and, mm. and, and touring now uh, for you. Hey, it's the same. You know, I'm just an older version of uh, what I was then. It's My attitude is the same. Yeah. And I still like the same music. You know, I think, I think I've learned more about music. You know, at one time I, like, because I was a teenager in the 50s, so rock and roll was a big thing with me. 50s rock and roll, you know, and uh, so I, I, I didn't really particularly like swing singers. You know, I didn't like band singers. Mm-hmm. That was like before. But then as time went on, I, I learned to appreciate Frank Sinatra, for instance, you know, and Tony Bennett and people like that, which in the 50s I, I thought were like passe. But uh, Well, you like, we you were an Elvis fan, right? Like you were a big yeah, Elvis yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. 50s rock, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis, Frank Domino, Chuck Berry, Elvis Presley, of course. We had, because uh, we had a prep sheet. They always give us a prep sheet, which I knew, that, you know, I mean, most of your stuff is so well known. Mm. But our crack team, this is the book they, they said, <laughs> he became friends with his idol, Elvis Presley, in 1965. Right. And stayed that way until his death in 1967. <laughs> 60s. 1967? Yeah. Well, that's a short friendship and... Yeah. Uh, Boy, we sure missed out on a lot of Elvis there. Yeah. <laughs> so you, 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 he was your idol or your guy you really looked up to, and you, yep. and you met him and hung out with him. Yeah, yeah. And my my first year in uh, in the business, 1965, when I came over to do uh, some Ed Sullivan shows, and I met Elvis Presley in uh, in Hollywood. You know, I was out there hmm. doing an Ed Sullivan show because it's funny. At that time, uh, it went color. You know, it was black and white before that. Right. And then when they went to color, they had to do it in um, Los Angeles because they didn't have the facilities in New York. <laughs> to go to color. So uh, then I went out to LA and did some shows out there. And Elvis Presley was, uh, I went to Paramount Studios for to do a song for the movie. And they said, Elvis is here and he'd like to say hello, you know? And I said, wow, Christ. You know, everything was like happening in that first year. It was mind boggling. What was the song that year that, that was the big song for you? Uh, well, my first hit was It's Not Unusual. Mm. And then I had Watch New Pussycat. And then I had a ballad called With These Hands. So that was in, uh, you know, in 65. So when I met Elvis, he was walking towards me singing with these hands. Mm-hmm. And I thought, Jesus Christ, I mean, here comes Elvis. It was like a dream, you know, it was, wasn't it wasn't real, but uh, but it was. And he said, how the hell do you sing like that? <laughs> I said, well, you're partly to blame, you know, listening to you. So, Did you ever, like, I mean, with a guy like that, you're hanging out with your idol, and you're a guy who's known to, like, let's be honest, a lot of chicks. Did you did you ever get to let, let, we we call it pulling a train? <laughs> you know, like, I've done it with my, I've done it with him, me and him on a girl. Like normally, what would happen is because he's better looking, he would get the chicks, mm, yeah. and then, like he would kind of guilt them into banging me as well, and it'd be like me and him like, <laughs> waving at each other over a girl. And there had to be some of that with with you on the road all, over all the years. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm. it was very noncommittal. Mm. Mm. Like now, you could do grandmother. 
daughter mm. and granddaughter. You could do it like nobody wants the grandmother. You bang the mother and the daughter. Have you ever bang the mother and the daughter together at, at one point in your career? I can't tell you that. That's a yes. <laughs> See, for me, ask me that question. Absolutely not. I've never done that. I've never done that. So, and I can't tell you that is a yes. That's an absolutely yes, and that's probably like in many different countries. He's probably banged them in, in England and here. Um, What's the most chicks at a time? Not, we're not only going to ask you about girls, but like, uh, Tom, I, gotta, I was so psyched that you're coming in because, again, you're a guy. Who, you are everything. Like, you're the pinnacle of a rock star mm. in, when it comes to that because they're throwing underwear at you. Yeah. yeah I don't care about that. that I care about the, the gigs. Like, the coolest gig was, like, back then was, like, the Copa and stuff, right? Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. That was the place. In New York, but, yeah. Yeah. Did you when, ever I, do, when I first came over, I did a, uh, a Dick Clark Caravan of Stars in the summer of 65. And that sort of turned me off a bit because we've toured everywhere in a bus, you know, all over America. And I, I didn't realize America was so big until I, <laughs> until I did that. So I went, I went back to England with my tail between my legs a bit, you know, because I thought this is not the way, you know, it didn't seem like show business to me. But then I was playing a place in London called um, The Talk of the Town, uh, which is a nightclub. And then my agent saw me and said, you know, you need to be in the Copa and uh, nightclubs like that. So... Uh, and then my TV show came out. So yeah, what was the big um, like? Like I, I don't understand how back then did somebody just see you and decide, mm. hey, wow, this guy's got a great set of pipes and uh, he's got the sex appeal. Let's uh, yeah, at the beginning, yeah, my my manager, well, the guy that uh, became my manager, Gordon Mills, his name was, and he came to Wales where I come from, mm -hmm. and he was well. She came to visit his mother, and he saw me uh, in a club, and. Uh, he said, my God, you know, you, your voice is incredible. And I said, well, thank you. And he said, if you ever come to London and you want uh, some help, you know, I'm, I'm your man. So then he called me up and he said, look, I've never managed anybody before, but I, I'd seen him on television. He was a singer himself. So I knew that he was in the business, mm -hmm. you know. So I grabbed all of him with both hands and I thought, you know, you know you're not getting away from me. So, <laughs> so I, I could tell that, that he was the one that, uh, that was going to do it. And then he wrote, it's not, not unusual. And uh, that was it. That was the beginning of it. And and uh, you brought up uh, the TV show. I remember, you know, watching the uh, the uh, yeah. Tom Jones uh, show, the Variety Show. Yeah, yeah, on ABC. Uh, yeah. How how did that work for you? Now you're you're a club singer. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you hit, mm -hmm. and then they're throwing a TV show at you. Was that a rough uh, thing for you to go? Like yeah. I've never done t television. Well, I you know the only television I had done is guesting on, on right shows. right but now you're you're the, never hosting yeah before. you're the guy yeah so I didn't know whether I could do it so we, we did a special first of all and because uh, you were in like sketches right they'd put you yeah, in the comedy sketches and yeah, I, I remember yeah. watching that uh, yeah, so, with my parents yeah while they weren't yelling at each other right so, uh, <laughs> I wasn't crying it, uh, it, it worked <laughs> and I, I liked it because I could do all kinds of songs you know, as when you go on TV and you you guest, mm -hmm. you do one song, maybe two. Right. You know, so you got to, but then when you've got your own show, you can do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you could so be in I, the I middle like of that. something to just break into song, <laughs> you know, yeah, whatever yeah, whatever and, uh, song you wanted. The duets, you know, I was always pushing for, for, for rock singers. Mm -hmm. So ABC Television wanted more uh, middle of the road people. Right. But I was pushing for Jerry Lee Lewis and Little Richard, you know, which, and Wilson Pickett. Which I got on there. Yeah, yeah. And it was like a trade-off. You know, I had to have Barbara Eden on as well. You know, I dream of Janie and yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like kind that, of do, do the little sketches and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and and what a trademark that uh, opening was. It was the microphone. Yeah. And the pinky ring. The ring. Yeah. This is Tom Jones. There you go. And uh, it's not unusual with start, and uh, then then you'd come out. But you didn't find that difficult to. Um, to host, like, how, how involved were you in the actual production of, of that show? Oh, very much so. Yeah? It was, yeah. I mean, I was nervous, as I say, when I did this, uh, sure. the pilot. You know, but um, well, so the more I did, the, the, the easier it became. And it became second nature to me then. It was like a strange time back then, because uh, if, if you did hit in music, apparently they just gave you television shows. Yeah, like, well, Glenn Campbell had uh, yeah. had one. And, uh, well, Andy Williams was Andy one. Andy Williams was, like, was the one, yeah. Dean Martin. Dean Martin yeah, yeah, so, Dean yeah. Martin would have that. Do yeah. you find nowadays uh, it, it is just more difficult to, to break in and, and, and get that popularity? Um, I, I think it's basically the same, you know, the, as it was then. It's always youth orientated, mm -hmm. you know. Record companies are always looking for young bands and young singers. It so, always seemed though that back then they would give if somebody clicked, they really were just handed so much mm -hmm. uh, media 
uh, back then. They were all over the TV. They were doing guest spots on Laughing and yeah. and uh, well, having uh, their own shows. Right. Well, the reason I got my show, they told me, was that I could I could do all kinds of songs, mm -hmm. which was um, and I was like twenty eight years old then. So uh, I sort of. I filled a gap in there because it was either you got Andy Williams, you know, singing sort of middle of the road stuff. Right, right. And then Glenn Campbell, country, you know, so they wanted somebody that could cover all of it, and um, which, which uh, ended up to be me. We ever, uh, we ever censored on television for words or, oh, yeah. or movements or? Yeah, Ed Sullivan show so, especially. Really? What did, what did they do? Well, when I first came over um, in 65... And they said, you know, you can't move like that. Oh, you know, Jesus. On, on television. <laughs> we'll cut the close ups. They were telling me. He was me, actually having sex with a girl on stage. <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> so they, they were telling me something that they told Elvis Presley nine years before. Wow. Like nothing had, had, had really changed. And um, I remember I did a. And you had to do it. It was like an, almost like an audition. Even though, I, you know, I was signed to do the show, mm -hmm. you still had to do a rehearsal in a rehearsal hall. Because they and, wanted to see. And do it live. Yeah. They wanted to hear exactly what you were going to do. Wow. And so they, I did a, a, an album track called uh, What You're Going to Do. And the opening line is, uh, you've been running around balling, right? hmm. which means having a ball, you know. Right, right. You've been right. running around balling, playing the clubs every night. And when I said balling, they said, what? <laughs> you can't say balling. On, on I said, well, it's, so I had to say wailing. Oh, of, wow. You should have changed it to fucking. <laughs> well, <there> you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I had Delilah out, you know, they said, uh, well, we've got to change something in Delilah. I said, well, if, you, if you're going to take out, I felt a knife in my hand and she laughed no more. That's the, the reason he's that's killing That's the this big, girl. yeah, the yeah. big payoff but there. But so he said, no, it's not that. It's uh, at break of day when the man drove away, I was waiting. So they said, if you, it, was at, it was at break of day, you know, and when the man drove away, that means oh, he was with her all night. My I said, well, God. yeah, that's why he kills her. <laughs> yeah. So they would, it, it wasn't the fact that he stopped her with breakfast. a night. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a sex thing. I mean, it was unbelievable. He, he wow. Was, he that... was like the most powerful man, though, Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan, I mean, yeah. Was he a nice guy or was he? He was. He was a nice guy. And uh, he liked me, which, which, which was very uh, useful. Because hmm. I did like five Ed Sullivan shows, you know, so... Uh, I heard Ed hated uh, Joe Voss. Is that yes. uh, true? <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't... Because he never, didn't paid, him never paid a bill, the skin flint. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to a party and he told everybody it was paid for. Yeah. Was probably still people looking for Tom for some money for that party back in 1968. <laughs> <laughs> was there, was there any, anybody that like opened for you that became a big star? Um, any of the yeah, the, well, the Who... You know, who opened for you? Yeah, they used to open my show in uh, <laughs> in '65. Yeah, Jesus That's Christ! Awesome, they follow the Who. Yeah, <laughs> were they hard to go on? Because Sabbath, Black Sabbath, had Van Halen opening for them in like '78, and they and mm. like that. They said that was it was really hard to go on after mm. Van Halen had done what they did. Right? Did you have trouble after the Who, or didn't you? Didn't no, care? no, not really. You know, Especially was, they're there to see Tom. You know, it's... They, well, they used to do these package tours. You know, you get all kinds of people, a mixture of rock and pop, and uh, you know. So, uh, and everybody dug it, so it was, it was fine. Did you do any of the Motown scene, any of that stuff, like the tours with the Supremes or any of those people? Yeah, like when, when I did this Dick Clark Caravan of, of Stars tour, <laughs> there was the Shirelles were on there, and a, a, a doo-wop group called the Jive Five. You know, there was a lot of uh, people that were around in those, uh, in those days, you know. So they wanted to sign me on Motown once. They wanted, really? Yeah. You know, you don't find many artists that can talk about their experience with the Shirelles and Motown mm -hmm. that are still putting out albums, still relevant, still drawing crowds, right. and still have the the pipes. And you're willing to take uh, chances mm -hmm. uh, that other people aren't. When when you know when you covered uh, Kiss, right? Uh, the uh, uh, Prince song. Yep. People were like, "What the hell is he doing?" But yeah. But it was a big hit. Yeah. Well, when I did it with the Art of Noise, I think they thought, oh, Vegas meets uh, techno pop, uh -huh. you know. And uh, but then when they heard it, heard it, they realized that it was a, um, you know, it was a serious record. Yeah, because it, it wasn't. It wasn't kitschy. A lot of people was, thought it was going to be this kitschy kind of a uh, goof uh, uh, that's right. album. But um, man, you sang your balls off on it. It, well, it sounds fantastic, and uh, it it put you into another category it put it, it, it you you then transcended uh where you had been 
and were able to keep your your career going, which you've done for years. Uh, Was was that a calculated thing to keep your career going this long? Uh, Did did, did you think when you started that you'd you'd still be in the business and still be? No, I I didn't. I didn't know whether I would still be alive. (laughs) Really? Yeah. But uh, with 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 doing Kiss, I I liked the song and I was doing it uh, in my show live, Mm -hmm. not thinking about recording it. I just thought it would be a good song for the, for the stage and then the art of noise saw me do it on TV and asked what I recorded with him so I said okay let's, and, and let's give it a shot at the time also was the really the peak of uh, MTV videos and everything yeah. so the video really took off and That's people right. were just That's... watching I remember my you know my mother would watch and go oh my god it's Tom Jones right. it's like yeah it's, you know. so we had the uh, breakthrough video award, right right you know so I'd never had an award from MTV before but uh, that I was huge. That what do you? What do you? Do, do you do anything uh, for your voice, or you're just one of those guys that are just lucky? Because some people, their voice goes after a mm. while, and you still, man, you you, yeah. you nailed those notes. I'm lucky. It's 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 a God given uh, talent. You yeah, know? It's, it's a natural voice. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I went for lessons when I was a teenager, and and the the woman that was uh, giving me uh, voice lessons, she said, "You nailed sing. You singing pretty. <laughs> you singing pretty c- correctly. If you're going to do pop music, you know you can't do it." any uh, better than you are you know as, mm-hmm. as far as breathing is concerned and using your diaphragm you know in in the, in the right place so i think that's what's kept me going i've never really abused it singing correctly right yeah i think so that, it's so odd to listen to somebody that has such a powerful voice and not think how are you not ripping your voice apart mm. on a nightly basis but that's just the natural way that you uh yeah. you sing it's uh quite fantastic yeah i don't have to <laughs> i don't have to warm up or anything i don't do any God, vocal I, uh, exercise i'm or sure there are singers that you know, want to just belt you in the head yeah, exactly. <laughs> after hearing that. It's like, I don't do anything. Yeah. You know, no honey and tea or any of that. No, he just walks in, he belts out the show, bangs 80 chicks, and then leaves. <laughs> I do not love that. <laughs> I, could, I could not believe how great this CD was, because I didn't have any of the names of the songs. It was just all tracked. Yep. But it's like, you know, you've been around for a long time, and it's just, it's, it's a really, like you said, relevant, powerful CD. It's, it's mm-hmm. fucking great, man. Thank you. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't know what else to say about it. I it just is still it. like it's one of those, uh, you, you know, you could, you could screw to this music. It's uh, oh, you know, yeah. that powerful. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a good mix of stuff love it. on there. Not you the know, opening girls. song, you can't no, because every time he goes, "I'm alive," you're like looking around, like oh, what? <laughs> you can't. But there's slower songs, and then there's fast. It, it's like it's. I wish I could, I could do it more justice uh, and describe it better, because I listened to the whole thing a few times through, working out. It was great. Do you still, uh, you still enjoy doing the the classic, your your hits, uh, yeah. for the people because they, man, do they eat that up? Yeah. Well, that's the the people keep them alive, you know. When, yeah. When when I do Delilah, for instance, you know, yeah. it's so recognizable as soon as it starts mm-hmm. that you get applause up front, you know, before uh, before it's, you even start it. So it, it's a it's a great feeling. I, I like that because if I went to see somebody and he or she didn't do any of those songs, oh, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Thought, well, what's there are people that do what's that? What's wrong with that? You know, the fans are left going, you know, hey, I, I'll I'll get the new album. I'll learn to love these songs mm. and see them next time around. But you know something. Play some hits. <laughs> yeah. Wanna, well, that's what, I, that's what I do in the live show. Mm-hmm. All new stuff that I put in, and, and I sort of fit the hits through, throughout the show. Yeah. Not like new stuff and then old stuff. It, and it works. They all, they all, they all work. Yeah. I'm and, and being played by the band. You know, the same, same band is playing it all. So you don't get that uh, shock from listening to one record and then jumping to, to another. You know, right, the band right. Is playing it all. Do you got a favorite song? I mean, I know it's a, it's a kind of a hokey question, but do you have one that, that like... That you that you do that you're like that this is the, the best thing I've ever written. Uh, it's one of the um, is a song called "It Looks Like I'm Never Gonna Fall in Love Again." It's a ballad that uh, a guy called Lonnie Donegan wrote for me in uh, in England, and that that still stands up. It's a, hmm. you know it's a powerful ballad. And you do that every live show? Yeah, but it's not unusual. Is is the most important because that was the one that changed my life. You know, your first hit record is 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 so important. Hmm. And it still stands. It's, oh, it's, man. Yeah. It's, it's a great arrangement. Well, uh, to it. a lot of your songs, you, you, you hear the, the classic Tom Jones songs on the radio mm. and you just you, you kind of stick with it, you know? You, mm. you don't, yeah, yeah, I'll listen to that. Mm-hmm. How do you it's, not listen to, like, She's a Lady or Sex Bomb and just go, that's a bad motherfucker? How do you not? You can't not listen to those songs. They're, oh, just, they're great. When, uh, yeah, when I, I saw you live, I could not, I, I was in the casino, just Sex Bomb, Sex Bomb, the whole, for, mm. for hours. Right. Just singing that. If that isn't one that gets stuck in your head, man. Yeah. It's funny because kids like that song as well. Yeah, it's great. I don't great. think they know what, they, what it 
you know what the words are because there's some there's some <laughs> risque lines in there. But um, that is know, odd because uh, I did see uh, during when I I, I saw your show uh, there was a girl had to be eight years old mm -hmm. standing up kind of uh, on a table with uh, parents just watching. And I'm going, there's an eight-year-old watching Tom Jones, and there's some risque lyrics going on there. Yeah, but they don't throwing... think they hear those. You know, no, no, they just like the music. Yeah, like the music. She didn't and, throw uh, her underwear, did like, she? Uh, no, she oh. didn't throw her underwear, <laughs> although she was looking at Tom's pants <laughs> at one point. There. You ever, you ever uh, done TV and had people go, uh, well, you know, could you wear some padded underwear yes. or something? Well, no, they, they, when, I, when I had my TV show, I had to wear a belt. Like a dancer's belt, <laughs> really? You know, what dancers wear, yeah, yeah. To keep it all, uh, you know, keep it all in place. Oh. You know why? Because there is <laughs> there is an instance where you'll see him on, on a live show and go, "Wow, <laughs> that is Tom Jones." <laughs> what, a, what a great problem to have, <laughs> sir. Your penis is going to offend millions like, of people. <laughs> no, I just assumed he had a spare microphone. If uh, the one went out, yeah. he's able to just reach in and get another. <laughs> say, Bert, Bert, uh, Robin from Batman had the same problem. Uh, Jim uh, Norton Ward. does not have that problem. <laughs> my friend, Flo my friend Jim Florentine's a comedian, and he had such the opposite problem that his yeah. first TV appearance, he actually put a sock in oh, the front of his pants God. so his penis looked bigger. No, he there did. was a yes, rumor. He did. There was a rumor for years that uh, that you had done that. Yeah, there was the sock rumor. That's right. Yeah, but I've I've said is that those pants were so tight there was no room for anything else. <laughs> no room for a sock. It was all Tom Jones. There you go. <laughs> and you probably didn't realize, of course, that the, the tight pants would accentuate or you never would have worn them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. It was just a fashion statement. Of course it was. But, dude, how did? <laughs> oh, it's how, fantastic. How great is it to go through life? Yeah. Like you wear pants that show off your hog, and chicks go, "Oh my god!" and they throw hotel keys at you. <laughs> Like, what is that? Is there any better feeling than that? No. no. <laughs> of course not. Did you ever take a hotel key off the stage and not know who you were going to see and just do it? No, I never did that. You had, what would you have, like the roadies and stuff, like, you know, kind of yeah. tell you who was who and what was what? Exactly. Yeah. See, comics, like, it, it, most good comics have small units mm. because they're covering up their small unit with comedy or whatever, just being like, all the comics that have big units aren't that good. Richard Pryor had a big dick. Did he really? Yes. Okay, so one guy. <laughs> leave it to, Va big his leave it to Voss. Because it was legendary. We're, talk oh. we're just joking with Tom about his penis. You're going into like a real psychological profile. Yeah. Well, you right. know, a lot of people have small penises, and uh, our fathers gambled with Tom Jones, thank God. <laughs> Creep. Uh, 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 so the, uh, the new album, yeah. uh, uh, what was the... Uh, what the hell am I trying to say here? Oh, uh, uh, you have people write uh, your music? Yeah, or you, yeah. Uh... yeah well, when I, I signed with the S-Curve, is, is the label that I'm with mm -hmm. here. And um, so they were getting me songs, you know, that had already been recorded. or And I said, I want some new stuff. And then they started getting me new songs, which I was not in, excited about. So I thought, well, I better get in uh, with the songwriters and, and, and work with them, you know, and tell them what I, what I want. Oh, okay. Rather than wait until uh, songs show up, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's what I did. Each writer that came in, uh, I worked with them, you know, and, and told them. That's I guess after a time, you figure out which songs are best suited for you. Yeah, because uh, it must be hard to have somebody else write a song for yeah. you and then look at it and go. I well, really nine times nine times out of ten, they'll they'll be something to do with sex. You know what I mean? And of course, you know which which is fine if it, if it's a cool song like Sex Bomb is a very clever song, right? You know. So that's fine. But you don't come up with many of those. You know, mm -hmm. The other ones are sort mm -hmm. of just blatant, you know, and um, not clever. So that stuff, uh, like one songwriter wrote, uh, you look good with my T-shirt on, you look even better with it off. And I said, yeah, I, little... I think that, you know, we need to move. Yeah, the, move the sexuality in the Tom Jones songs has been very subtle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like that. I guess you mm -hmm. leave the, the literal... To uh, the hotel room, <laughs> well, you, know, <laughs> you know, whatever. So, so I, that's, that's what I did. I, I got with them and, and sort of started to write you know, w with them and change things around. Mm -hmm. and say, you know, so that's uh, and thank God it, it turned out well. I mean, we had a load of. I recorded a lot of songs and then we picked uh, what we feel is the the best out of the bunch. You know, to put on this CD. How many? Uh, how many? dates to your tour a year i mean you are you're always out yeah about 200 200 Ooh, shows wow. give or take Jesus. do you get a regular gig in vegas yeah, Where are you in vegas? yeah mgm 
Oh, okay. Mm. I, I saw you at the Riviera years ago, didn't you? I, worked, I saw you upstairs at the Riviera. Uh, not the Riviera, oh, Caesar's no. Palace. I was at the Flamingo, uh, Caesar's Palace, uh, Bally's I was in for a while. Oh, maybe it was Bally. It was Bally's. Bally's, yeah. Bally's, yeah, I was working mm. catch lines. Have you noticed how Vegas has changed a lot over the years? Like years ago, it was all like the, the wise guys that ran it and took yeah. care of everybody, and now it's just a bunch of corporate people. Yeah. Who just but don't seem to take care of the talent as well. It's, um, it's easier now because they only want you to do one show a night. Huh. As when, when I was there in the 60s, you know, in the 70s, I used to do two shows a night, every night for a month. Oh, right. <laughs> and uh, after a while, you know, you start to get... Wow. That, that was... Uh, my voice was suffering a bit from from that. A little so, taxing uh, on your uh, voice. Yeah, doing yeah, that many. especially in Vegas. It's dry there, yeah. you know, so... And uh, Tom, maybe a few of your friends. Yeah. You could get a few of your friends to sing at a uh, club. And <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, but they were there, though. You I know, think the, we would work well together if I opened for you. I oh, think we'd be. Jesus. We'd, I'm saying. You'd rather have yeah. Joe work with him again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, listen, man, I'm a top notch comic. There's no audience I can't work. Clean, uh -huh. Vegas. I'm telling you, I think we'd be good. You know, maybe your opening act gets sick or whatever, and you need a right. rich boss. I, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm just looking out for the team. Make right. the audience sick. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, maybe the bulge in his pants isn't available, so he needs a replacement, <laughs> which I'm sure you'd be perfect as. <laughs> He doesn't need a comic opener. You don't use comics as openers, do you? Not anymore. I do. I do the ninety minutes myself now. Yeah. Did you use comics as openers? I used to. Yeah. Did any of them bomb? Uh, no, they were they were all pretty good. Uh, George Wallace was with me for yeah. for quite a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jay okay. Leno. Jay Leno used to open for me. Hmm. Jesus Christ! The Who and Jay Leno. <laughs> yeah. That's not bad on the credentials list. Got a few. Yeah. I saw George Wallace a couple weeks ago. He's still in Vegas at the Pink yeah. Flamingo. At the Flamingo, yeah. So you're going out. When are you going out to promote this? Um, well, I'm, I mean, you're out, I mean, like uh, tour dates. Like you're out right now doing the press premiere. Are you, are you, yeah. you have concert dates and stuff? Uh, yeah, I will do next year now because I'll be promoting all the way up to, to Christmas, all over. You know, I got to go to mm. Europe uh, next week. Yeah, he like has to do press all over the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, amazing. really. You're recognizable everywhere. Uh, yeah, I right. mean that's that's something. You can go to Japan and they're like, oh, Tom Jones. Yeah. <laughs> when I do a gig, I fly in. The day of, there's always tickets available. <laughs> so uh, I, go, I go on the local radio and I tap dance and beg, and then hopefully people show up. It's got to be nice to go to Europe and then go to Africa, wherever it is you go. Yeah. I probably could have picked a better second country than Africa after yeah. Europe for He's Tom playing. Jones' audience, but <laughs> yeah. I'm a non improv idiot. Uh, the is there Kenya anybody... Dust Bowl. Yeah, I know. I really am. So how is the Sierra Leone? And is the, are the uh, pirate hijackings going to affect you in Somalia? I'm a true asshole, Tom. My apologies. Um, Anybody you'd like to collaborate with that you haven't yet, that you'd love to do something with? Uh, yeah, there's um, singers. I mean, Whitney Houston, I think. Is, you know, I don't know what she's singing like right now, yeah. but um, she's got a great you know, great voice. So I, I think a mm. duet with her would be nice. Alicia Keys, I like. Oh, she's great. You know, uh, Duffy, you know, is, is a Welsh singer. I've seen she's... Duffy on, uh, in the Starbucks. Like, they have her. It's, it's a her, right? Or is it a he? Stop. Yes, go. Okay, I have, I've seen her CDs in Starbucks. The CDs, yeah, so not, oh, not working in Starbucks. No, that would right. be uh, atrocious. <laughs> a worse future than uh, Joe Voss. Right. <laughs> Get over your father, man. Uh, he remem you remember Joe Voss. Like, Joe Voss had been outside five minutes ago waving, yelling, Tom, it's me, Joe Voss. So either Joe, it, Tom's memory is obviously really good. Do you remember my name? Yeah. God damn it, he has no idea who I am. <laughs> I it's just me. I'm yes, just I do. I've uh, seen you on television doing stand up. How do you really? Holy yeah, yeah. sh. Wow. Tom and I are chatting. Uh, um, yeah. I hate well, this. That makes me. What, can, can, can two men of similar ilk discuss something? Couple yeah, of men. where are you going to find one? <laughs> <laughs> Have you really? Yes, really. Yeah, that makes me very happy. Yeah, yeah. Very a guy funny. like Tom wow. Jones had to get up and turn the channel because of me. <laughs> 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 it's funny. He was banging one time and something just wrecked the vibe. Oh, it's yeah. that little man with the awful head shape. <laughs> Wow, I'm so happy. Oh, damn. Well, I'm a true fan, man. I'm really happy you, you, you came in and you're going to be promoting. Yeah. And uh, again, I, I've been harping about this album. I really have been raving about this album for Thank the you. last week. Um, when we were, we were two weeks ago, because we were off last week. Um, I, I think, didn't know what to uh, expect. Yeah, I, I think we should absolutely uh, have Tom pick a, pick a track. We'll mm. uh, go to break playing it. And okay. uh, yeah, and, and man, but you don't need my uh, help, continued success. Uh, Thank you. You've been amazing over the years, and it's it's amazing because I do remember as as a, a kid uh, watching and seeing my parents just freaking out uh -huh. about it, and then you know going see you live uh, myself and just loving it. Thank so, you. Transcending generations, my man. Thanks. What song would you pick? Um, Give a little love is is a, is a good song, isn't it? You wouldn't pick I'm Alive. 
I, okay. I'm alive. I open, I open my show with that now. I, I think we have to. We, okay, here's what we have to do then. Oh, we're doing Jimmy's pick then. No, no, we're doing, we're doing, <laughs> here's the way it works. Yeah. We're doing Tom's pick. Uh-huh. Right after Jimmy's pick, which is I'm alive and then what Tom wants. All right. It's up to you. It's not, not up to me. I'm not trying to override You think Tom. I run this ship? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. The album is called 24 Hours and it is, uh, what's the matter? Oh, we're fine. Yeah. Oh, we, we, you, the, the, I'm alive, and then, and then what Tom wants. We're I'm play, alive, and then love. we'll play uh, what Tom wants. Well, yeah. What was the one you wanted, Tom? Give a little love. Okay, so I'm alive, and give a little love. We'll play both. Okay. All right. Great and, Tom uh, Jones. We'll be back. Tom, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Leave that at that. I have a question for Steve. Yes, yes Jimmy. I want to hear the... You had uh, Steve asked Tom Jones a oh, question, yeah. and apparently it was stammering. Oh no! It was. Um, I actually would have said it on the air, but I didn't want to interrupt because I knew we didn't have a a lot of time with him. So it was taped. So I want to know: Can we hear it? No, we can't because I deleted it why intentionally. You, why would you do that? Because I'm in a fucking asshole. That's why. <laughs> no, um, because I'll tell it. I'll tell it right now. No, no. But why would you? No, because the, it would have to be the exchange between yeah, like, you and would, there was no Tom exchange. And, why would like, you there, there, there was a bunch but of. That's oh, just really? it. I heard. I heard. That's just it. The oh really? And then I heard there was some stammering involved, and yeah, I stammer and, anyway though. And no, a little nervous, like yeah. chit chat thing that can't really be described. Uh, if if we I'll heard tell it, the story, no, but, but why would you? No, no, it? it's not about telling the because story. Because when it's, I see somebody very obviously surreptitiously uh, going over and cl clicking record, 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 I'm like. <laughs> No, I'm not a fucking idiot. You yeah, didn't maybe get if you me. work but, at fucking a uh, the nuclear show. a nuclear facility, but yeah. Yeah. you're working at fucking the Opie and Anthony show. It's a comedy you know. show, and it's a funny. Like, I understand that. I'll tell. I'll tell the story. No, no it's not about telling the story. About. It's about having the tape of you stammering in front of Tom Jones. Yeah, like why wouldn't you? Like that would be the good thing. When there's so much disastrous audio on all of us. Like, disastrous. <laughs> it really true. wasn't. You know, honestly, dude, it wasn't. It was it was sort of a matter of fact thing. I don't I mean, know. Sam came, seemed to think it was yeah, pretty well, good. Yeah, well, because Sam's an instigator, and whatever Sam thinks he can instigate and stir shit up on, he will. But I'll tell you right now the story. I'll tell the story right yeah, now. But the story is not. No, it's I know not the story, story. Is, me, is me fumbling in. I know the, the story is me. Yeah, it's, fumbling it's in front of Tom Jones. So it's why the execution of the story teach, at the time to teach Sam a lesson? Why would you hurt the show? No, it's not. It has nothing to do with Sam. Sam didn't tape it. Well, or whoever. Why, uh, why would you delete that when you knew it was like I ran an ass out of myself? That'd be funny on the air. Yeah. I don't comprehend that. Like, there's nothing unless it was something I said that I shouldn't have said, whatever. But like anything a personal, you know. You I don't know. It out you know, what, quite frankly, I don't really know if it's. You know, I. It was it was such a nothing thing. But in in retrospect, I was sort of like maybe I shouldn't have brought that up. Maybe it wasn't something I should have said. You know, it's like I don't know. You know, it was like one of those things. Like, eh, you know, fuck it. You know, if they want to say it, I'll say it on the air. But no, I'm no, not going to. Why would you delete the audio? I'm saying like. Do you know how much audio I've deleted over the past 10 years that was just like, you know? No, but you did that purposely, Probably like... Would have been the best <laughs> stuff ever. <laughs> nah. You yeah. know, please. please. I get called a faggot and uh, incompetent on a, on, on a regular basis, you know, so... No, then is, then you come a, here. Yeah. <laughs> this is, but this is a legitimate question, actually. Yeah, this I understand like, it's, legitimate, it's a legitimate legit. question. Look. Yes, he recorded it. Yes, I deleted it. Intentionally. Mm. Absolutely. But why wouldn't you think about it? it would be funny on the radio show? A five-second piece of audio of me getting hit in the face with granny panties on a fucking Tom Jones show? No. No, no. You, if it was nothing, I comprehend you... exactly what you're saying, okay? Um, like, you were if, thinking, like, I don't want to look bad on the air. No. Dude, I look bad on the air every day. Every day. I get yeah, made out. Yeah. But who... But I, I'm serious. I don't know why you would delete that. I can't... Well, if you, you got... think it was a crime against nature, then I apologize. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not... I'm not saying that. I'm I'm asking a legit question. It, it, and I'm giving you a legitimate answer. You're I not, thought it was though. stupid. I thought it was stupid audio. It didn't sound. It sounded like dumb. If it's you stammering in yeah. front of Tom Jones, then it it's been funny. funny. Yeah, it's funny. Mm. Like me stammering horribly. Should I have deleted the uh, Zach Wilde interview because it was you know? In, honestly, dude, in in retrospect, I never thought that Zach Wilde thing was going to be as fucking funny as it was. Exactly. But, so yeah. why would you do, delete? When you know what we do. Honestly, like, because it was such an obvious attempt. If I didn't catch him out of the corner of my eye going, record, 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 that, I would have fucking let it go. Wow. I've, been, I've been caught so, so many was, times barking dumb shit into microphones that I've just let go completely. So it was to keep somebody else from having pulled one over on yeah. you. Yeah, that, so was, that, was, that was more but, important than audio But the for audio the show. from the show, the, time, yeah. for the show is like, you know, yeah. that seems to be paramount here.
Yeah, I understand. I, I understand, and I understand, Jim. You know, and if it and, it and if it was a horrible, horrible offense that I've committed, then I apologize. Like, even if it did suck, let's say we played it and it sucked, then we would jump on the person that said this is great audio. Then that we'd have played it and gone like, oh, dude, this is nothing. What are you just trying to get on Steve? You know, you're fucking being an asshole. Like, it would have worked if if what you, know you what? said is true. You know, I've been called queer, incompetent, and a number of things every day. Can I get a break once? You know, I'm not. I'm not even not giving you a break. I'm asking right. you. Yeah, and I'm and I'm I'm fessing up. I completely deleted it on my own. Is it completely deleted? It's gone because yeah. I know how to I, I know how to get rid of things completely. And oh, the Tom Jones liners are in there. Those are safe. Well, that isn't really you know. You know, but um, you know, me talking to Tom Jones is not. Oh. I don't get it, man. Right. I just don't. thought that would have been well, fun. I know, I know the pain of being tormented, and I'm going to have to try to turn my character around, too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. This is one they didn't get. You it's know not what? About, dude, it's not about <laughs> them getting it. Any, it's about the show. I understand, Jim. It's not about Danny or, or Iraq or whoever it was. It's not about one hey. guy one-upping the other guy. Derek. Or whoever it was. It's not, you, and, and after, and, and after 10 years, I don't get that? I get it. I get it. Why? Considering every chance that is possibly given, I get, you know, you know, fucking humiliated and, you know, <laughs> fucking browbeaten as, you know, you know, as, as do a lot of people. I caught one. Fuck them. No, you don't get this chance. All right, well, it's not fuck them. It's fuck us. No, it's not fuck you. Yes, it's, it, it is. A, because, no, it's not, Jim. Dude, it was a five second piece of audio. It is, though. It's like in, in the sense that. I've brought in every humiliating, awful piece of audio. I've, I've never asked for a piece of audio to be. Lying. I've never asked to be exempt from fucking things, with with the exception of of of, of this one time. How many fucking times have have, have well, humiliated? You said you've of... deleted tons of audio over the years. Yeah, but I mean, of of myself making a jackass of myself. That's it, that's you what that's... I'm talking about. No, 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 no. You're not you're not you're not hearing me. Like me in the studio going, eh, that was dumb, and eh, that was dumb. But if I'm in the studio with Derek and I'll like you know, and I'm stammering into a microphone. He keeps it, and he fucking either gives it to you or he doesn't give it to you. It happens all the time. <clears throat> Steve. Um, oh, you rock it, 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 what was not, it was very obvious we were recording. We were not trying to hide it from you. It was, it, yeah, it was also not done in, in a malicious way. It was a very honest moment that you were having with him where you were explaining a story, whether he was interested or not. Steve was really... <laughs> Just a little set off by talking to Tom Jones and sharing this experience. Yeah, that's what, that's all it was. It wasn't to hey, Steve's an asshole. Let's smash him by using this audio. Maybe hidden under that, but, but if it's gotten to a, point it was a where very honest Steve, moment. Steve makes it sound like whatever story, like what whatever the audio was, be it good or bad, we were somehow going to call him queer and incompetent because <laughs> of the story. It's like it's not about it because you keep bringing it up, and it seems to me like it's you're just, the only one that brings it up half the time. And it was just a goofy piece of audio. It would have got played, and if it got nothing, it got nothing. But sometimes stuff right. just works. Well, this, you know, one, it, this show of all shows, I mean, anybody should know the, the weird shit that we decide to pick up and run. Well, we, like I'm fucking... Uh, that that this, this show runs with. It's, you know, it's I'm anything. sure it'll it's happen anything again. At all. I'm sure there will be another piece of audio. It's not about the audio. It's not, it's not like, oh, you missed the audio. It, it's about, like, something's going on. Where the first instinct when something ridiculous happens is they're not going to get me. Just to erase it, yeah. That, and like, let's get rid be. of that instead of, which the theme of the show is supposed to be. Everybody, um, for, every, every man for himself. Nah, everybody not, smash each other in the nuts. Not and, even about that. It's about, we have a fucking audience to entertain. I mean, I know you know this, but I'm saying yeah, that. I'm And half that. of that shit. That's the entertaining stuff is our disastrous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. The funniest stuff is when we're fucking up. It, it, what, yeah. And and it's like it's gotten to a point behind the scenes where that's something that like your first instinct isn't like oh that'll be, that, yeah I'm an ass that'll be funny like you know I get why that would be funny like when I hear the, the me and Zach Wild or I'm a blithering idiot what I, about the dress or the dress something about the dress I, mean, I immediately know that's an awful piece of interview audio who's yeah, Zach Wild Deuce Chill what's that who's Zach Wild it's oh, um he's, he's uh, a guitar player oh. it's uh I immediately know like that's what that's that's good for it's awful. And, like, instinctively, like, your first instinct is, fuck them, they're not going to get me. Yeah, I guess we can't go around with that mindset. I mean, I'm not even saying it's totally his yeah. fault. Whatever well, it is, it's got to... It, it's. Well, yeah, it does have to stop. Why, why is my mindset, fuck them, they're not going to get me this time? It has to be worked out 
whatever it, is, it has to be like that. You're right, absolutely. It's like little. Not that that's ruining the show any more than me babbling about it, but no. It's how about it's uh, just an, do you understand what I'm saying though? Thing. Absolutely. Maybe once a month a Steve Appreciation Day. So no, I don't think <sighs> that needs to be done. Thank you very much. Rich. I'm looking out. I'm trying to be a team <laughs> I player. I appreciate it. Rich. Sam is saying yes. <laughs> I like that idea. I listen. No, hey, how come? Why? Why is my? Uh, why? Why has my attitude changed to fuck them? They're not going to get me. I don't mm -hmm. know. That's not a question for me. I don't really know. Hmm. I don't really know. But you know, trying trying to lead a fucking derelict pack of misfits is not the easiest. Tra is well, not what the do easiest you think? That's Pappy Boyington. What? what? I don't know. I don't know. Um, how do you? You know, this is not the easiest position to be in. I'll I'm tell not, you right I'm now. not saying it is, but I mean, for us as, as on air. It's it's at times easy, at times not easy. I understand and, that. Anything that affects... and I am not one to fucking. I I am not one to like you know every day sit sit in my you know sit in my little cubby and fucking you know figure out how I'm going to ruin the goddamn show. I didn't say you were. I know, but I don't want that to be the implication. It's not. Okay. It's really not. It's simply about this. It this one like sometimes little things happen that are kind of shed light on the way things are, and this is it's yeah not yeah about that's the one Tom of those Jones things question. right. This is one of those little things like where instinctively you ran over. Get rid of that. And it's like, dude, that's what we like. That's Anything that would be bad would be great on the air. Yeah, the issue it has nothing now to do with the recording or what was recorded or wasn't recorded. It's now the, the, the reason why you would delete something like that instead of just letting them grab it and bring it in here and we'll all goof around and say how... Uh, Maybe I'm just far too it. sensitive. When Maybe I'm just way too sensitive. Dude, all of our strongest hmm. value, all of our strongest asset is what we are on the air. Like, sure. I mean, in any... Like that, that, you know what I mean? As, as much as we tease E-Rock and stuff like that, like I, I've always said, and, and, and I, he's irreplaceable because he's a fucking mess. And E-Rock, you know, if you're hearing this, I love you. He's a mess, but he's always <laughs> bringing something. But he's a mess. E-Rock, you know that. But it's like, that's great to listen to. Of and you course. know what, and, and Steve was saying how it was just a nothing piece of audio. Well, I, it would have worked great. I mean, let's say it was a nothing piece of audio, and Eric was like, "Oh, because he ran in here with the big story." Yeah, Imagine yeah. if that be, if the, if there was just nothing there, nothing and it fell there. on his face, and we just got to smash Eric for twenty minutes. Then Steve wouldn't have gotten a, a, a <laughs> He's bruise. It would have been it would have been fucking E Rock that would have just gotten <laughs> okay. hammered. Saying, well, "All right, you my, brought my, this in <laughs> as something good." My yeah. sensitivity level has been fucking raised so goddamn much over the past couple of years that I'm always constantly constantly looking over my shoulder and that's not entirely uh internal paranoia all i'm not right? saying you're paranoid mm. no. but like yeah, you, and you're right it's got to be fixed and it's got to be addressed it, i i wish i knew i wish i had the fucking magic bullet to fix it but you know uh -oh. bullets the, yeah. Yeah. the or, or bullets. uh well voss like like here's a perfect example if voss is i knew he'd be afraid to act with uh chad palmentary and, and it was like as disastrous as that was for a performer I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this nicely, but like he basically Louis Beans. Yeah, I mean, you know, you humiliated yourself. I'm talking about some tape. I'm saying, but that's uh, hey, hold on a second. I, I I had to fucking serenade my girlfriend in front of fucking you know on on national I know, radio. Dude, no one is saying. So I mean, you know, to uh, no, yeah, no one's a bigger believer in in Steve audio on the air than than I am. Believe me. I know. I know. I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I think I pulled through that audition. I mean, that read pretty well. Oh, um, terrible. Really? Yeah. But it's, a, it, um, it's not, that's what I'm saying. It's not about the audience. No one's saying that you haven't sacrificed your humility. I mean, of course. I'm only saying when the instinct is to jump in and get rid of it. It's yeah, that, that shouldn't there's be There's something going on that's not good. I think you're right. I yeah, think you're absolutely right. I completely agree with you. The instinct should absolutely be like, all right, they got me on this like one. Like, you should have said, save that. Here Make sure it you comes got on that. the air. Yeah, it's going to get on the air. Oh, I didn't realize. There you go. But, but dude, that's great. I'm... Am I, I'm, I'm not cringing at that no, one. I know, I know. You should be. It's horrible. I'm not. <laughs> Dude, there's 8,000 of those fucking clips. But yeah, you're right. Maybe I'm entirely too sensitive at this point after being fucking <laughs> bludgeoned. Well, you know, that's how you executive produce. Well, what is your response to it? Like, I ruined things. There was one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I'm really, and I, I don't give a shit. You're right. That's funny. Play that one. Um. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I think we ought to, you know, think a little bit more uh, about those situations before hitting the well, the nuclear right. button that yeah. deletes something that might be gold. Because <laughs> you, you, you want to be liked, and I like you. Like you don't, you, nah, you, you no, know no, what, dude? No, I've gotten, I'm... I've, I've so gotten past that. I understand your point. Your, your, your point is, I want to be liked by everybody, and yeah. the position I'm in, I cannot be. Right. Why? 
No, it cannot. Because can, can, uh, you, you bring this up a lot, and I'm, I find this to be fascinating. You cannot be in a position of authority where you have to administer some kind Steve of... Steve thinks that no, one, no one's allowed to like him. Or something like he's got some weird like he puts up this huge barrier where you guys you can't be friends because he's above you or Steve something like that. feels like this. And I'm, I'm, I, Steve feels like he's up against three people. He feels like mm -hmm. he's up against you, Travis and Sam and Iraq to a certain degree um, and that you guys probably don't respect him or like him. Um, I think you feel like you're not respected. Yeah, completely valid and completely valid in in. in 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 a situation where you on a constant basis have to subject yourself to ridicule and there that that barrier that, or that, that works, hold on a second let me finish. i'm not done though. talking there's there's that 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 line between on air and off air gets blurred no it doesn't I don't, no it, it doesn't get blurred it Steve. does no it, it never it does. does when when have i ever in the office called you gay queer how many times have you went like, everything seriously. that you bring up on the air? Because you, this is another thing that you bring up a lot, where you say you say that the the shit goes down. Uh, you, you you like to say that the staff doesn't know when we're not on the air anymore, and it's completely different. The the kind of behavior that goes on on the air is completely different off the air. But you seem to think that it continues when in fact it doesn't. It doesn't. No, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Exact we'll play. Instances. We'll play goofy gags on you. So, like, occasionally, we'll you know pry off every key on your keyboard and rearrange them. <laughs> <laughs> which, has now, which is now somebody's <laughs> responsibility. Uh, if, uh, yeah. If, but it's if, just goofy stuff. I know. Well, if but, she would, yeah, well, yeah, but I've, the difference, I've made somebody the accountable for that, by the way. So. Done? Here's the difference. You look at that with rage. We just look like if, if somebody did that to my keyboard, if I came in in the morning and my keyboard was all mixed up, <laughs> I would just start laughing. It's funny. I, I, wouldn't wouldn't know I difference. don't. Steve doesn't. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I thought I'll he tell was you, seeing I'll, double from the what? night before. I actually thought about this. Um, whereas this show is comprised of people who, by and large, I think got picked on a lot in high school and probably in their formative years got picked on a lot. And I'm one of them. Whereas a lot of people had to develop, you know, um, cerebral weaponry. Uh, uh, to combat those things, I was able to smash people's faces into concrete oh. uh, with impunity. Wow. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you can't do that once you hit a certain age. Um, where's, so, the, where's the point of this? Why the not? point of that is uh, I don't have some of those. Some of those. Uh, uh, I'm not as adept, probably. Uh, I'm not as quick witted as some of the uh, some of the other people are. So, so you'd rather smash somebody with your absolute fucking loot. Well, I guess that's where we're different because Wait, you, you know used I, to beat up, kid, like pick on you, and you used to just fuck them up in school. Absolutely, kid, just really just. I used to fucking ram people's faces into fucking out, radiators really? and fucking. Cyber and you stop fucking with you after that? Yeah. Grr, grr. But it's why like, not? It has to be. Get the fuck out now. Oh, that, see, there was some good acting. Oh. It has to be fun, man. This I'm not. Shit on you! I'm, I'm, for all this, if, if this isn't fucking fun, like I, if this is if, if this is a fucking unpleasant place to come, then what the fuck are we doing? It shouldn't be. No. Yeah, they, but here's the thing: I can can I play devil's advocate and say why? If you can Steve's spell point, it. Steve's point is, <laughs> if he gets point. abused, he can't come Steve's back. Steve's point and, is, he's not coming back and gay. abusing. Oh, you can sorry. abuse. So you could take abuse. Because you give it out. You have the opportunity to abuse. He doesn't have the opportunity to come on the air and abuse. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a I'm valid like point. What do you mean? The devil's it's lullaby. A valid, it's a valid point. <laughs> he's not. He just said it. He's Shut not up. verbally. And let me laugh at my friend's comment. <laughs> he's verbally not coming back on the air and getting even with anybody. So all his rage is physical, which he can't do now. You can verbally. I got it. All right. So, so he's explaining. Agree. He's agree explaining what Steve what. explained yeah. completely. Yeah. What Steve is saying is that he's frustrated that he can't punch our faces. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Well, he's, he's saying that you know, like if you Steve when, when he's been fucked with, I mean, that was how he dealt with stuff. And if he feels like you know, I, I don't think he's saying that literally, but I mean, no, I'm not sure not that literally, but yeah, I mean, at times. But point is, it's got to be fun. We can't. None of us. We can't have this aggressive atmosphere. It's got to be fucking fun, man. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, Rich. I'm a big fan of Steve. I, I, so you, am I. But this is the point. I'm a big fan of all these guys. I mean, they all contribute for real. I mean, it, it's like, but we have to fucking Bram. have fun here. Yeah, we really do. And we have to keep in mind that whatever happens, uh, it could be fodder for, for the air. You know? If, 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 I think if you had said something uh, like, you know, the tape is there and it's like, oh, guys, I said something that was kind of stupid. Um, we would be like, was it just talking to Tom Jones? Yeah. Oh, come on. That's going on the air. We'll goof on it. Or if it was, you know, my dress got out, 
we would never do that no, or, I understand or something that. about a relationship or this or that or the whatever that shit would never get out but something as silly as just stammering because you're in a, like like it was said an honest moment in front of Tom Jones where you're getting a little like fucked up about it that's kind of funny I've gotten I've gotten plenty of moments like that where uh <laughs> oh, what is that? Oh, great! What's this that? is uh, I, I, this re just reminded me of is from an old NEW bit uh, where Anthony was trying to do a read for uh, wiper blades. Yeah, it had to be in Spanish. But, yeah, but it's a perfect example of yeah. shit that yeah, and know, I, could, yeah, it could have been deleted. And Steve, you love telling me how long you've been in the business. I've only been in this business as long as you brought me into it. I understand. So that. I've already learned to shut my mouth around open microphones and i understand that if i go <laughs> if i go and i do you know and like let's say derek pulls me aside he wants me to read something i know that anything i say in that room is potential fodder for air and there's shit that i've said that he's used in in uh, uh saturday night virus promos i knew it was there i was like oh, i know he's gonna use that he knows how to keep it. his mouth and shut in front of a, a recording <laughs> and thing. i've done it tons of times he doesn't know how to you keep know? his mouth shut in front of a live on air mic <laughs> that's <laughs> but i'm just i'm just saying it's you any, it's fair game. I think once once it's been it's been digitized, it's it's fair. You game. You know what? You know what, dude? In this one specific instance, I turned the mic off because I cut the liners with Tom Jones. I turned the mics off, potted everything down. Then I was in the corner talking to him, and they were potted back up, and the recorder was pressed again. So it wasn't like I, I it wasn't like I carelessly left anything on. Hmm. So, you know, if if my if, if my attitude needs needs an adjustment. Um, well, I just think it's more that uh, the the mindset has to be. That material for the show is like is paramount. Tantamount. That's yeah. the fucking. You sound to me like a problem. guy who has given up. Like when you're talking, I'm listening to you. Like you feel like you've given up. No, not even given up. I have. You sound defeated. It's a grueling fucking experience to do this sometimes. Why? It should. It shouldn't be. be. It really shouldn't be. Yeah, I'm, I'm the not... stressors are different. The stressors are different. Absolutely. Than they are for you. Than they are for Jim. Than they are for. And, that's, and, and that is guys. true. I mean, but we had to take a certain hit too. I mean, we got you know. Hey, look, dude, I'm I'm. I'm I, mean, I haven't taken a day to walk around in your light loafers, but thank you. Um, yeah, it's a queer joke. They, I, I nah, but you, you can't. You got to say like they, they always say that if you want to understand a man, you should saturate, saturate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> delete oh. that! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you should why sachet a mile in his shoes. <laughs> saturate. Ah. <laughs> uh. I only wish the Pavarotti was here to photograph that moment. <laughs> exactly. Can you imagine if this monumental idiot to my left, <laughs> which is Voss, <laughs> if Voss right now thinks I'm talking about Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve, how, how come everybody, like, everybody has such a good time around here except for you? Like, you're always not, the one not having, everything is a mess, everything is running around, it's a train wreck, it's, it's, it's sweating, it's putting your hands on your brow and breathing heavily and sweaty i'm a fucking stressed out guy what why? can i tell you um why i don't know i don't know i, don't know. I mean if you ask me what do i not like about this job i'd say waking up in the morning yeah, yeah well, that is sucks. the and worst and that's part. where it yeah. that's where it ends once once i'm like awake and on my way in yeah Fine. then it gets better what's the well, matter you're Jimmy? listening to intervention with uh i don't know i just don't, I don't intro, why, intervention by the way we I all said, get along just fine, except for Steve. He intervention. Just, he just intervention. What happened? No, no, I'm doing this thing at Yale. A, a, a class. What? Yeah, I'm teaching a class at Yale. No, you're not. A, a one-time thing about uh, comedy. I, and uh, I, I, I'm like, is it this Wednesday? I think I have it in my book wrong. Yale! I, I hope not. Well. Are you not here on Wednesday, too? No, no, no. It's a, it's a nighttime thing, I think. Ooh, he's going to yell at you. <laughs> I hope it's not this week. All right. Well, you know, I think we got to keep that in mind. Do you get paid? Yeah. No. Next time, maybe you know, just think. walk out of the room smiling and 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 prepare for another. Well, not, you, know. you don't have to be so in, enraged that it's happening. Like you know, I know, I know when I walk in, there are going to be times where I'm going to be fucking firmly planted under the bus. Sure, but, I do. I, it's happened to everybody. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying I'm exempt from fucking a, a fucking trouncing. I've been. Fucking... But I look at it like it's kind of fun. It's you know, it's 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 good for the show. It's you know, it's what it is. We bash the shit out of you. friends. Bash the shit out of each other. It's what they do. We don't talk nicely to each other. We fucking we're a bunch of douchebags to each other. It makes yeah, uh, no, that's valid. Makes for fun radio and I think I think I'm hypersensitive to a lot of shit and that's that's one of my faults. Absolutely. 
I think I'm completely hypersensitive mm. to a lot of shit. I also think that there's a lot of stuff that I have to deal with, too. Uh, See, I just avoided a gay joke because I'm being... What? Being nice guy, Jimmy? You, you don't guys. have to be a nice guy, Jimmy. I can, you know, the gay jokes I've gotten used to at this point. But... You fucking... said I've avoided a lot of shit. Oh. <laughs> 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 I was going to say, unless it was on your tip of your penis, but... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Uh, oddly enough. <laughs> um, oddly enough. <laughs> um, it mm. is not an easy position to be caught in between talent and the powers that be that are signing your paychecks every week. Sometimes there are odd positions to get put into and that you get put into and it becomes very stressful. Well, I don't think you'd ever find a, a situation where it, uh, the powers that be would be mad that you didn't delete something. On there. I'm not talking That's about something that. something different. I'm talking about in the overall picture. You want to know why I'm so stressed out? Yes. It's not easy. All right? I'm not, I'm not saying it has to be. I'm, I fucking, I'll, I'll work my ass off. But, you, you know, it's it's stressful. It's stressful being in a situation where you have to deal with uh, an, a volatile on-air environment and then people who are trying to enforce rules on that volatile on-air environment and then being the intermediary in between the two parties. Uh, do you have kids? Uh, trying to. Good for you. Thank That's you. all that matters when it Working all ends and done. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you fucking kids. <laughs> yeah, let him talk. Oh, Thank Uncle you. Paul. Uh, 57 years. You know what? Old. If you want to relieve some of that stress, uh, December 25th and 26th, I'll be at oh. Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant. And maybe you come down and... So really going to work else. on Christmas Day? No, 26 and 27th, <laughs> nah, I said, dummy. You no, said 25th no, and Yes, I did. Play the tape. I said okay. August. I mean, Derek. December 26th and 26th. Do the bit. <laughs> Why did I say... What did I say? You said 25 and 26th. Oh, for mm -hmm. sorry. I said 26 and 27th. And even if I was working Christmas Day, I'm a Jew. I don't give a fuck about your dumb holiday of lights. Yeah, that's true. Holiday of lights? That's, well, that's not... Us. That's, that's, that's you. You, that's you, you. Oh, dummy. <laughs> oh, fuck. Whatever. <laughs> holiday of lights. It's a festival. <laughs> It's a, it's a festival, festival. of oh, lights. Yeah. You're right. Whatever. Boy, you are a lousy Jew. <laughs> well, you're all technical, <laughs> you fuckers, man. Technical? You were, off by, you were off by a messiah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a holiday. <laughs> you're terrible. All right, Derek, Derek has the clip. And right, here it is. Anybody still cares about this? You know what? If you want to relieve some of that stress, uh, December 25th and 26th, I'll get <laughs> oh, that oh, corrected. There, there you go. <laughs> you have to do that a lot, don't you? Ladies and standing. gentlemen of the jury. What's <laughs> that? Of the jewelry. <laughs> I had a lot of physical pain today. Really? God damn it. Fuck, man. Just when the pain goes away in your stomach for months. I don't know what you're talking about. It, it sounds terrible. Fucking, it's fucking horrible. My, it, it feels like my insides are just falling out. Are you pink socked? Are. <laughs> Was that what? <laughs> Somebody ever a pink sock. Pink socked voice. <laughs> What's a pink sock? Uh, so guy, come on. It's a, when a guy me. pulls his large penis out of your ass, how the skin of your asshole grips his dick. And he gets pulled out a little like a pink sock. <laughs> and then his cock finally peels off. And your skin hangs out stupidly for a minute. Until you tuck it back in forcefully. With an emery board. <laughs> Boss, it's, it kind of is like this. <laughs> no, that's not oh, yeah, it. God, <laughs> It's a rectal prolapse. Ah, no. That's where the inside of your asshole falls out. Well, how does oh, that it looks happen? like a Jolly Rancher. That looks yeah. tasty. Can that happen from farting? It's like so something? cherry like. Can, Can that happen, happen from, from trying to farting? shit? No. Farting. You're farting out a fucking yeah. acetylene <laughs> torch <laughs> gas like tank. Cannonball. What, would you be? <laughs> what do you eat? Anvils? <laughs> Maybe from like trying to pinch out a loaf. Could that happen? Danny can no. pull these pictures up in seconds. Exactly. I love it. Wait, a prolapsed it? asshole. Oh, another one? Yeah, connection here is so slow. That's good. Scroll, scroll, scroll. No, this is actually something I'm trying to work. I'm trying to, I'm working on, I don't uh -oh. want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil resume? it. Resume? <laughs> no, I took care of that last week. Good one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. I, I want to hear, um, I want to hear my faux pas on that um, commercial. Oh, it's kind of long. You want to play it into break? Well, I don't want to play the whole thing. Then. You want to just start just it? Hear and just, me getting right, angry. Whenever you get uncomfortable, just uh, oh, it'll be instantly. <laughs> Believe me. All right, here we Delete go. Delete it. Check it out. <clears throat> you gotta be done super fast. Before. What do I gotta say? Which, which ones? All this of them? One, that one, that one, and that one. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Bosch Micro Edge Excel Wiper Blades. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> See your way clear. <laughs> See your way clear with buff. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just laughing. Uh, 
See your way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now at Strauss Bosch Micro Edge Excel. <laughs> yeah, it's my. Oh my God. That's Bosch Micro Edge wiper blades. Bosch Micro Edge wiper blades. Uh, see your way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now at Strauss Bi 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 <laughs> Micro Edge Moss <laughs> blades. You gotta be fing me. <laughs> Uh, okay. Ooh. See your way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now at Strauss. Ba 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 <laughs> Take it from there, right? See your way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now at Strauss. Bosch Micro Edge. Oh, fuck, that's rough. Holy <clears throat> See your way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now at Strauss. Bosch Micro Edge wiper wiper blade. You know why? It doesn't say Excel in the second one. Bosch Micro Edge. Mm. See you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now it's Strauss Bosch Bosch. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'll keep trying. See you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now it's Strauss B Strauss. It's f***ing impossible. This is a tongue twister. Uh. See you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now it's Strauss Bosch Micro Edge wiper blades are. are I almost had it. <laughs> Nine ninety nine each. Okay. See you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now it's Strauss. Ba I f it's Strauss. Ba I'm like anticipating the pandemonium before it even starts. <laughs> you <f> tool. <laughs> oh man. See you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now it's Strauss. Bosch. My See you. Holy. F See you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now at Strauss, Bosch Micro Edge wiper blades are priced from only nine ninety nine each. Save on Bosch wipe. Oh, you had it! I totally had it. Ready? See you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now at Strauss, Bosch Micro Edge wiper blades are priced at only nine ninety nine each. Save on Bosch wiper blades at. God, mother! Almost had it. I start getting mad, I guess. Just a fucking short version. See you way clear with Bosch so Micro Edge life. Excel wiper blades. Right now at Strauss, Bosch Micro Edge wiper blades are priced at only nine ninety nine each. Save on Bosch wiper blades at Strauss Auto. D f you, c f you, you mother. C <laughs> hey, you. F <laughs> uh, see you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. <laughs> Holy sh. Cancel your appointments. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel. <laughs> this ain't gonna work. Holy <laughs> s***. <laughs> the Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Uh, see you way clear with Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades. Right now at Strauss, Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades are priced at only nine ninety nine each. Save on Bosch wiper blades at Strauss Discount Auto. <sighs> Bosh, wiper blades, my <laughs> Dude, what was the problem? Were you having trouble saying it? Yes! Just kidding. Yeah, I know you are. Oh. Quality. Literal Jim. Oh. Yeah, the quality was really good on that recording. <laughs> it was impossible to say it twice in a row. Bosh, micro edge. And um, I was completely hammered drunk, if you recall, <laughs> like I was every day at NEW. <laughs> That was afternoons, so it was kind of like after the um, after the show, and after you're drinking all day to try to say Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades was a little difficult. Bosch Micro Edge Excel wiper blades, Bosch Micro Edge Excel. It's hard to say. It is. It was very hard to say. That was a fun one too. We didn't even have that in the system. Eric had to like burn it. So I think that was the first time that ever aired on uh, on satellite. Wow. Well, I'd fun. like to hear the unedited version. <laughs> yeah, because I I really get mad and start calling it a cunt. <laughs> That'll happen. All right. oh, I, don't yeah. those, I don't know if those even exist. No, because they were you know everything was everything had to be edited. I think that was pulled off of like the fucking cassette tapes. That was somebody's VHS tape back in the old days. <laughs> Oh yeah, someone's VHS. Someone used to tape the show on VHS tape. Yeah, that would Ow. be that would be uh, me. just the audio. <laughs> oh, was it you? Yeah. Oh, someone, some tool used, to, <laughs> some queer. Yeah, who's the jizz bag? Oh. Some incompetent <laughs> queer. Who's the hypersensitive? Oh. <laughs> All right, Steve. Thank you. Thank was you that your for girlfriend your, um... at the wedding or your wife? Your That's, wife? Yeah, no, your that wife. was my girlfriend. You're not married. 
Not anymore. That's why it's his girlfriend. That's why it's my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. apparently what they don't tell you that when you get that? married, you're supposed to stop dating. So, yeah. oh yeah. wait, <laughs> sorry, you that got was awful. you're divorced. Yes, Rich. Since when? Yeah, I got divorced. Uh, fuck. Paper was papers. Papers were signed two months ago. I think. Well, the girl at the wedding was very attractive. Yeah. You did very well on that one. Thank you very much, Rich. Did she you? actually help uh, stupid Bob Kelly get into shape? Too. I want to call her to uh, work out a plan for me. Bob, oh, is, Bob's coming in tomorrow. Call her to curse her out. She fucking ruined a good joke. Yeah, he, thanks a lot. You, you cost us a lot of audio. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what is she? She's a trainer? She's a professional bodybuilder. No, she has and AIDS and a vial and she gives it to people. <laughs> and they drink it and lose weight. Well, she could that be a nutritionist, <laughs> stupid, or a trainer. That, she could be both. a nutritionist or a trainer. Yes, I know, but to me, the, the AIDS joke was funny, so I said it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But, well, don't call me stupid. I mean, I wasn't oh, sorry. Sorry, that was a, sorry, Einstein. Okay. <laughs> That's a typical normal question. Don't call you stupid. You said, you said was the Pavarotti yeah. there. Well, what are you going to call her? And don't to help call you out. me late for stupid. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you can call me Ray, or you can call me Dummy, but please don't call me stupid. <laughs> you can call uh, my syndrome Downs. <laughs> look at it. Oh, by the way, I took a piss, piss next too. to Tom Jones yesterday. I've never wanted to just look at a cock so badly. Oh, you should have. Why I didn't couldn't. You? It was too obvious. Dude, when are you going to get another chance to look at Tom Jones' Probably fucking Thursday. monstrous hog? <laughs> Probably Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah. Got a date? Um, no, actually, in January, I'm going to see him when I'm in Atlantic City at the Borgata. But you might not get the opportunity to see his hog. That was, you were was right next to him. Why didn't you just Because I would have literally, because he didn't be from TV. You could have peeked. Said, I, I, I got to see your hog. You could have made a joke about it. You know how to, you know how to hog. fucking... Just like look, look over and go, hey. got a big diamond ring on it. Yeah, he's like, hey, I heard you have a big hog. Oh, shit, you do. And then just nudge him on the shoulder like you do. I do. I should have thought of that. With his Welsh accent and his big dick. <laughs> <laughs> Could have seen it. How did how the pee stream sound? Did it ah. sound like you had a big pee hole? Sometimes you get like a resonance. If it's a big dick, you'll hear like a... Yeah. <laughs> Piss sound instead yeah, what, of a, what, what, what no. caliber was his piss hole? Yeah, <laughs> it sounded like a tinkle, like a tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. No, yeah. it sounded like fucking a fire hose. Yeah. Like he didn't want somebody attending a certain college in 1958. <laughs> he dissolved a full urinal cake, <laughs> 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 drilled a hole right through it. <laughs> uh, I hate when people put mothballs in urinals. Oh, and it smells like mothballs. Why? I don't like them. No. They just put ice in them in bars to keep the, That's the best piss way to do out it. of the traps. But it's fun, too, because you get to melt the ice. You yep. make little ice tunnels with your piss. Yep. You get a cup and fill it up and then chew on it. You girls have no <laughs> have no idea how much fun it is uh, to piss in bars and stuff. If there's a cigarette butt in there, you try to actually um, get rid of all the tobacco and the paper. <laughs> And then the, the biggie is if you could then unroll the paper that's wrapped around the filter with your piss stream. You knock the tobacco Jesus. out, that's just phase one. Phase two is peeling the paper off of the cotton filter just with your piss stream. And then just, you're like, I so win. Just the filter remains. Just the filter's there. And then you, 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 you like piss the shit out of the paper and try to dissolve that How and get holes in it. How big is your dick? Phase four is actually damn. to put it all back together with your piss. Yeah, actually piss the cigarette back, back together. together again. <laughs> <laughs> Vinnie Grant has that in his yes, club. He has a piss, wonderful. a piss game. Oh, that stupid thing, the piss. urinal. See oh. if you can piss as much as Uncle Bo, and Dude. you're supposed to pay a quarter, and it measures your tinkle. Yeah, what? Like, idiocy. Yeah. Leave, it it leave it to him to try to make a quarter for pissing. It probably all goes into a fucking a, a hose in his office, and he drinks it. <laughs> he goes to the beer taps. <laughs> fucking dopey. <laughs> the beer taps. Exactly. Can I have a peels? <laughs>